R2H supplies natural hardwood, smoke, and barbecue flavors based in Wisconsin. The raw materials are sourced from lumber mill operations. This reduces the amount of biomass waste that would otherwise require disposal, making natural hardwood smoke from unutilized sawdust significantly reduces the need to cut down trees for traditional wood smoking operations. Using the natural hardwood smoke rather than traditional methods also significantly decreases air emissions and helps to prevent deforestation. Good job. The founders started R2H in 2016 after working for the former leader in the smoke flavor industry. Jeff and Julie Rosen, two of the three founders, are a married couple. They work hands-on on every aspect of this company. They truly know the smoke industry inside and out. Jeff Rosen is the president and CEO. Julie is their director of technology and is here presenting with us tonight. An interesting fact about Julie is that she served time in the U.S. Army as a chemical operations specialist, and when not working, she enjoys handmaking bracelets and golfing. Assisting Julie tonight is the fabulous Lisa Hall. She's there in the purple R28 shirt. She is their sales and marketing specialist. She is an extreme hard worker and helped to put together the awesome sample kits that you received. Thank you to Lisa for those marvelous kits. For Red Arrow, Jeff was there for 23 years. I was there for 10. Um, they sold to Carrie. We didn't let, we didn't like their, we didn't make a deal. So we left and started our own company. Um, and we make smoke. We, we, we were lucky we got to start from, from scratch. So we were able to make our, make changes, do different things, make them, get new equipment. So we're, we're able to do a lot more different things than what we were able to do over there. They built this factory in mind to be as very efficient, um, to keep the cost down for our customers on the products that they buy from us. And a lot of it is the technology that, that we have in the back to make we, smoke. We know a lot of really good fabricators and all the people that make the world go around. So we were lucky that we, we know engineers and electricians and people that are good at all of that stuff. Um, and we're, we're very, we're concerned about the environment. We live here. So one of the things, um, we just had our DNR, they came and, and checked our, our stack. We use a thermal oxidizer and we had literally nothing coming out of there. It was a little bit of CO2 and um, a heat. We have a heat signature. so. Um, we recycle all of the waste that we have in the factory and that gets burned and that we use the heat back into the system. So it, it's, it's, when we did this, we did it keeping all of that in mind. So with our product, you can completely eliminate traditional smokehouse use, which pollutes the air. We take the carcinogens out. Um, traditional smoke still has carcinogens um, on the product. Um, it just, it's, it worked out great, better than we could imagine. So the next one. There's just a quick um, loop. So we, we get sawdust from where they cut the trees. Most of it comes here. It's nice. Wisconsin has a lot of trees. Um, so we're not cutting down trees to make smoke. Um, the hickory we have to get from far away. Um, at a place that makes, there's two places we can get it. One makes um, drumsticks and the one makes shovel handles. So we have to call them every once in a while and get hickory sent up. And then we get mesquite from Texas. And that's, we have our mesquite guy that I don't even know his name. That's what we call him, the mesquite guy. So he brings mesquite, hangs out for a few hours, unloads the truck and heads back down to Texas. Super nice guy. I should learn his name. So here's our stuff. Um, like I said before, it's clean, it's efficient. If we have to, we can run the factory with two people, which it's been hard to get people to work because I don't know, it's just hard to get people to work. So um, it's good that we can do that. But like I said, it's efficient, it's clean, um, sustainable, blah, blah, blah. Okay, next one. 
Um, but like I said, this is how we store the sawdust. Keep it in trailers, they load it into a bin and then it, it gets processed. Okay, the next one. Um, to make the smoke, this one right here. We use a rotary kiln. So some of you might be familiar with that type of equipment. Um, They'll use those to make paint, um, limestone, stuff like that. We, they're interested in, in drying the, the product that goes in. So the smoke goes in, there's no oxygen. Um, it makes a, it makes a, when, if, if there's no oxygen, there's no fire. So it just smolders in there and it makes a lot of smoke and we're able to collect that and infuse um, the water. So here's the collection system. That, that's actually the kiln on the, the left. It might be here, right? I don't know how you guys are seeing it. Hopefully the same way I'm seeing it. And then we have a special collection system um, with a special process in there that allows us to, because smoke is not water soluble, but the way that we have it set up inside the column, we can get the smoke to go into the water. And then we just circulate it until it gets to a certain bricks or concentration. And then once we have that main product, then that's how we make all of our other products, including the spray dried products. Um, here's some tank farm and the special products. So we can concentrate smoke, we can blend it, we can add polysorbate to it to make it water soluble. Um, there's all kinds of fun, interesting things we can do with it. One thing to mention is you see in these pictures, that's how we operate every single day. This factory is spotless. Well, we like it clean. And it's very it is. And so what you're seeing here is is very um it's not always this clean, but it's pretty close. <laughs> um here we go. So for labeling, one of the things about labeling, um, people keep asking about organic smoke. We can't do organic smoke because it's not um, it's not an agricultural product. So we can't certify the sawdust. I mean, it just comes from random trees and there's really no way for us to, to track it. So we can't do certified organic products. We can we can do under the 95.5 rule, you can add it there um, and still have a just organic or made with organic ingredients, you can use it that way, um, but whatever. So it's a natural product, it can be labeled, and the labeling is different for for the FDA versus the USDA. If you need that information, I can give it to you. It's boring, I just like to talk about it because you get a lot of questions about the, the status of that product. We, okay, yeah. Um, I tried to make this short because it's, it, this is the boring part. Um, so we analyze everything here in our lab. There's a couple of things that we send out. We check um, heavy metal and pesticides once a year at a third party lab. Um, there's one product that doesn't have smoke that we send for micro, but everything else we, we do here. So we have a chemist, he checks all of all of these things that are that we need to check. And then Viana wanted me to go over spray drying. So Jeff is the spray dry expert. Um, we were in Colombia once to and we with some colleagues and they have this great spray dryer and they let us use it and we spray dried some things and um we started spray drying and the guy left for like an hour and came back and he said to Jeff, clearly, you're a spray dry expert, which we thought was hilarious. So that's like the joke now. So Jeff did these for me. I'll try and up. So if anybody's real familiar with spray drying, you can chill or go to the bathroom or whatever. Um, so spray drying is, is really pretty simple and straightforward. Um, how it works, you take a liquid solution, it goes into a heated chamber. Um, and there's different kinds. Sometimes you'll have a, like a fluidized bed or the one we use is just, it sprays the, the liquid 
and it dries by the time it hits the side of the the inside wall of the spray dryer. So the the biggest thing is to get good encapsulation with um, with your emulsion and also to use the right um, product to, to, as the carrier. Um, so smoke has, is a is a it's funky. It's not it's not regular. I guess that's the best way to put it. It's not water soluble. It's in water, but it's not water soluble. Um, and in order for us to get a good good quality stable product, we have to use maltodextrin. So we use um, non-GMO um, project verified corn. IP corn maltodextrin. Um, that's it. Some people will add a couple of, they'll, sometimes they'll add uh, gum Arabic. I don't think, I don't like that, so I don't always use it, but that's one of the most important things is to get the right, um, yeah, well, to get the right um, carrier. So then I mean, that's really all, it goes in at a certain temperature, it dries, and then it comes out and goes into a box. That's, that's as exciting as that gets. Oh, there's one more. So here's a baby spray dryer. You know it's bad when you, you know, when you're younger and you would like, you're like, oh, I can't wait till I'm old and I can have a fancy car and I want a Porsche or whatever. Yeah, so now I'm like 40-ish and I would love to have, my dream is one of these spray dryers <laughs> in my lab because mm -hmm. it's awesome. Um, so yeah, so you can have a baby one. This, these, those big ones, that's an industrial scale. We do about 20,000 pounds run every time we do a run, so we use that big one. And someone else does it for us. We have a manufacturer for that. So here's kind of the process flow. We mix the smoke with the maltodextrin. It goes into a mixed tank, probably a Brado or something. And then it gets spray dried. It gets, and then it gets put into a box. It's, it's really not that exciting. Um, it's great. They bring us samples and we test all those samples and then people buy it and add it to snack. And we love that. That's really all I have for the presentation part. I wanted to leave most of the time for the snacks and stuff. So are there questions about that? Do you use one of those, like, um, like the smaller spray dryers in your lab for samples? Um, we don't. We don't. Um, they're really expensive. I'm, and I'm trying to find one that we can use to make. The one that our, our friends in Columbia have, oh. it does a couple of kilos an hour. And I think it's a GR. And it's, oh. it's awesome. But it's the footprint is big, so um, we we just have they're hard to find. They're really expensive, so I'm still looking. But eventually we'll have one in our lab. But we have friends that'll sometimes small small um, small samples for us. But with the smokes, we don't really need to do a sample just because we've been doing it for so long that we know what to expect. Got it. Yeah. So if you know anybody that has a spray, a baby spray dryer that they want to sell, then you should call me. We can have a talk about it. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. They're, I mean, people, I know people have equipment laying around and they're like, oh yeah, we had a spray dryer. Oh, but we sold it. Ugh. So, you know, sometimes you have to like make the right connection with the person that has the good stuff. That's on our wish list for Christmas, right? A baby. Santa, can you Santa. please have a baby <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, all right. So some people got Thank samples. You. Any more questions? Don't be shy. I know, you're, I know you're dying to ask questions about spray what's the most? What's the most popular smoke flavor? 
Oh, hickory. It's so boring. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think hickory is boring. Um, I like the mesquite is my favorite. It's like velvet. It's just, it's so good. Um, Can you talk about the beach? Oh yeah. Okay. I'll talk about the beach. So that's my favorite. <laughs> the beach is nice and America doesn't get the beach. Um, in Germany. So Germany. So if there's any Germans in here, don't take offense. Like if I, I say stuff, sometimes don't be offended. Just let it go. Um, so they're like the center of the universe for smoking. And I mean, their stuff is good. I've eaten and it's delicious. Um, so they make a lot of the smokehouses and then they also sell the chips or the logs depending on what, what the system is. The wood they send is beech and it ha it's, it's just a European beech. They grow everywhere um, and it has a distinct flavor. So we really like that. And then all the countries that do business with them so Thailand and South Africa and there's a lot of places that that do business with Germany to get the smoke houses and to get the chips they when they decide to switch over to do liquid they need that flavor so we import a product from Germany that's made from beach um, we do an oil we do a powder we do the liquids it's really nice we and we might have to just change the name because we just can't I, I don't know that people really, because it's not something we have here. Like we have hickory or I, people want alder wood. So we, we can make smoke on the bench top in small amounts. So any wood that I can get a hold of, we burn it. Like, you know, we, we burn it in our system so we can see what it, what it tastes like. Eucalyptus is super interesting. Um, alder wood is boring. Um, what else? Wisconsin cherry Yeah, so we get Wisconsin wild cherry twice a year and that's what's in the cheese. Um, that's lovely. It's hard to get and it's kind of a secret. Like we don't tell anybody who we get it from. So keep that mm -hmm. under your hat, but it's nice and barbecue sauce. Um, the cherry in Wisconsin is one of uh, just a, a beautiful crop and it comes in June, July, somewhere in there. And that's why we can only get cherry wood once a year because they trim the trees every year. So it is kind of a specialty product, um, but I just love how it, it can just give a tiny hint of sweetness to whatever your, your recipe is. So there's your long answer to, to a short question. Curious. Uh, how how do you guys um, remove the carcinogens? In is that a patented process that you can't talk about, or no? So we we don't. I don't like patents because if you do patents, then it goes out into the into the ether, and then everybody knows about it. I prefer trade secrets, but I can tell you because it's not. You can find it. Um, so when we get it's we call it full oil so when we get the full product we do a phase separation um and if you have some smoke there if you add water to it you'll see what happens so what we're doing is we're disrupting that organic strength and that causes all of the insoluble products to fall out of the solution and sink to the bottom so that takes out the tar the carcinogens the carcinogens are in the tar. So it's the benzoate, pyrene, um, those um, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Those are, those are like anthracene and, and all of those not nice products, those all come out. Um, but any ash or um, you know anything that kind of gets through the system that we, we don't want to get through will fall out during that process. So when we make smoke, um, we, do, we initially immediately do a phase separation. It'll start to separate right away. And then, and then we put it in, so that pink farm, that's where we, we let it rest. So it'll sit for three, we let it sit for three days before we do anything with it to make sure that we get all of those particulates and all of that stuff out. So that's how we do that. Good question. That is a good question. 
So it, it is healthier for people. I, I mean, I know people like traditional smoke because I mean, it's tasty. Um, and uh, I think what a lot of processors are doing now is they're doing a combination. Um, but those really heavy, heavy traditional smoked products that they were have been doing in Europe, especially in the Nordic areas for a long time, they had really high cancer rates. So like esophageal cancer, stomach cancer, and it was from those smoked meats. And once they started using this product instead, um, those rates fell by like 60%. So we know that it's a safe product. It's been out on the market for years and years. Um, the margarita recipe combines sweet and smoky notes. Mesquite smoke was suggested to be used with the tequila. The recipe is a standard margarita recipe where you take an off-brand tequila, add the mesquite flavor, because that will add flavor and aged notes, making the off-brand tequila taste top shelf. Then add triple sec and juice, and there's your margarita. Julie suggested doing a fun rimmer too. She takes corn syrup around the top of the glass, then adds sugar or salt. Mesquite wood is unique in that it's only found in Texas. It's also great in barbecue sauce or on a ham in the sugar coating. To jazz up mixed drinks, you could also use a smoked simple syrup. In addition to mesquite smoke, an oak extract is great with the tequila. Like mentioned earlier, you can take a less expensive alcohol, add smoke, and it'll taste better. The same compounds present in aged alcohol are the same as in the smoke. The oak extract has a sweet smell of vanilla. To make this oak extract, R2H takes white oak, toasts it to develop the flavor, then does an ethanol extraction. That's it. Nothing else is added, and the result is an oak extract with a vanilla aroma. This is also nice in chocolate. Later in this video, it's used in white chocolate for truffles. It can be used in vanilla ice cream or anything where you want an aged flavor. It's also very useful in HVP containing products to cut down on that metallic flavor and adds to the savory notes. For the eggnog, beech flavor was added. A little bit of this goes a long way. Beech wood is more popular in Europe than the US. However, it's an excellent smoke option. Beech also works well as a flavor modulator. The nut blend uses the oak extract. It gives a toasted oak wood flavor in this mix. Julie mixed the nuts with egg white and seasoning, baked them, then added the fruit. The oak extract gives a smoky flavor to the nuts, plus you get a hint of sweet from the fruit. Lots of other smoke flavor combinations could be done here too. For the truffles, Dark chocolate chips are melted with cream, then put in the fridge. Mesquite smoke was added to the dark chocolate. Oak extract was added to the white chocolate. The smoke adds another layer of flavor to the standard chocolate flavor. For the cheese, liquid smoke was added at the final way draw and gives an amazing smoky flavor. When using smoke and other applications with protein, smoke can denature proteins, so you need to watch out, especially in baked items but it can be used as a topping on baked goods, such as in smoked cinnamon sugar on a sticker doodle cookie. If you want to grill flavor without grilling, R2H also offers grill flavors. Grill flavors aid in salt reduction formulations. When doing salt replacement, adding the grill and smoke flavors at low levels can enhance the salty notes. The oak extract can be added to white or red wine as well. It rounds out the flavor and makes it smooth and palatable. It only takes two to four drops per bottle. Here's another pro tip. When smoke is added to an ingredient statement, it helps pre prevent reverse engineering. Beech also works well as a flavor modulator. It's also very useful in HVP containing products to cut down on that metallic flavor and add savory notes. Mesquite wood is unique in that it's only found in Texas. It's also great in barbecue sauce or in the sugar coating that goes on a baked ham. To jazz up mixed drinks, you could also use a smoked simple syrup.